Hi everyone, how's it going? It's Agnieszka Murdoch from 5 Minute Language. Welcome to my channel, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and give this video a, a thumbs up, I really appreciate it. So I recently went over 20,000 subscribers on my channel which is amazing and I just want to say thank you so much for following me guys. I'm really kind of lucky that I can share my knowledge with you, my tips and help you learn foreign languages uh, effectively. So today I'm going to talk to you about how I became fluent in French, how I learned French. Um, it's the language, apart from English, it's the language that uh, I feel the most confident in. Um, and I just want to share with you the step-by-step -step process that I followed to learn French. Um, obviously I started learning French uh, before the era of sort of Netflix, YouTube, apps and you know all sorts of things that are available to language learners today. Uh, so some of the things that I did will be uh, maybe a little bit outdated to you but obviously you know I followed those things and I was successful so you can still do that uh, and then you've got all the other things that exist today on top of that. Um, so uh, let me start from the beginning. Basically, the first thing I did when I started learning French was I focused on pronunciation. So I wanted to understand how French is pronounced um, and not just the, the letters, but also the, the, the kind of differences between the different sounds. So in French, you've got different ways to pronounce different E's depending on, on the sort of accent above them. Um, and then you've got the like EU combination of letters, which is pronounced in a very specific way, uh, which doesn't exist in English or in Polish, which is my native language. Um, so that was the first thing to really understand the pronunciation uh, of French. Then I learned uh, the basic vocabulary and phrases. So things like saying hello, introducing yourself, uh, asking people how they are and where they're from, uh, talking about your interests, asking people about their interests, learning the kind of everyday vocabulary for different situations that you would be in if you're speaking French when you're traveling or when you're meeting new people. So I basically focused on that from the start before I started learning any grammar or any kind of additional vocabulary. The next thing I did was I focused on sentence structure because I knew a few basic phrases such as hello and how are you and where are you from but I didn't really understand how sentences really worked and I think when you're learning any foreign language it's really crucial to understand the sentence structure and the way verbs are conjugated in that language. I mean obviously conjugation won't exist in all languages in the same way but it's something that you know exists in all the different languages I've tried. In French basically the the syntax is very similar to English so it's subject verb object um, all you need is the pronouns, so you, you need to learn how to say I, you, he, she, and so on. Um, and then you've got the verb conjugated depending on what the pronoun is, but also what the tense is. Um, and then you've got the object, which is the rest of the sentence. So for example, I go to school, I is the subject, go is the verb, and to school is the object. So it's quite straightforward, isn't it? So in French there are three different types of verbs when it comes to conjugation. So they are divided into different, three different groups depending on their ending and basically each of these groups has a different rule when it comes to conjugating that verb. So by conjugating I mean for example when I say I go and she goes, go and goes are different conjugations because the pronoun changes. In the first example it's I, in the second it's she. So in French, there are certain rules that guide those conjugations in the three groups, and they're actually really straightforward. So you just need to remember if a verb ends in ER, this is the pattern that you follow for verbs ending in ER, and then there's another pattern for verbs ending in IR and RE. Uh, and then obviously there are some irregular verbs as well that you have to memorize separately, but once you've done a few, you kind of get, get a, an idea of how it works. So once I knew the patterns and the different groups and the different rules, uh, it was time to learn some verbs so that I can start building different sentences. So I basically learned all the basic verbs that you need the most when you're saying anything. So things like to get, to go, to come, to want, to live, um, and basically learned those first. And then I followed a textbook. So I used the textbook. Um, obviously, you know, at the moment you've got different things available, such as apps and um, different learning programs, even free ones. Um, so you can do that. But if you follow a textbook, you will have all the different kind of themes that 
are quite logical. So you start with basic phrases, then maybe you focus on how to speak when you go to a shop, how to speak when you go to an airport, that kind of stuff. And I found that it actually helped me organize my learning because I could follow those different themes and I could practice using those newly uh, memorized verbs in different contexts. To start with, I only focused on the present tense and I think that's probably what I would recommend to anyone learning French because it is less overwhelming when you're just talking about the present. So start with that, try practicing speaking as much as you can, uh, build new sentences, and then you can move on to talking about the future and talking about the past afterwards. So that's exactly what I did next. I familiarized myself with the grammar rules for past tenses and future tenses. So I just focused again on the kind of most basic tenses that you might need. So that was probably passé composé, which is the main kind of past tense in French, and imparfait, which is uh, basically the equivalent of the past continuous. So in English, you would say, I played tennis when I was younger, or I was playing tennis yesterday morning. Um, and basically the two tenses uh, that are, I think, the most useful in French are the two ones that express those two ideas, the continuous past and the simple past. When it comes to the future, I also focused on the very basic uh, constructions that allow me to talk about my future. I then spent a very long time on the subjunctive, uh, which is something that uh, French learners often struggle with. So the subjunctive is not something that you have to learn about when you're learning English, which was the first foreign language I ever learned. Um, and it's quite a difficult concept to understand, I think. Uh, if you're learning French, let me know what you think about this subjunctive, if you think it's easy. But I personally really struggled with understanding it, but also memorizing all the different kind of um, phrases and, and verbs and situations uh, that I would need to use it in. Because there's lots of different kind of expressions that go with the subjunctive and there isn't really any reason why they would. I mean, obviously there's rules, but um, there's also lots of exceptions. So I definitely spent a long time on that and I would recommend that you do as well. Once you get it, you can really express yourself so much more accurately and so much more correctly. Uh, so I de definitely recommend that you focus a lot of energy on that. Um, the subjunctive exists in the present, but also in the past and in the future. So you will need to get to grips with it. I also did a lot of reading and I always emphasize that in my videos when I talk about anything to do with language learning. Reading is really, really important, especially if you want to make sure that you sound natural when you speak, that you're learning about context and how different words are used in sentences. Uh, so I did a lot of reading and I actually really enjoy reading in, uh, in any language, so it was not really a problem. I read a lot of novels. Um, especially by the uh, writer Amélie Nothomb. Uh, for some reason, my university library had lots of novels by her, so it was quite easy to access. But there's lots of different things you can read online, obviously, different blogs and, and news websites, uh, so that shouldn't be a problem. So my listening comprehension was actually quite bad um, for quite a long time. Uh, I actually struggled with listening quite a bit um, and I only realized how bad it was when I went to France. Uh, I spent a year in France uh, on my year abroad um, on a program called Erasmus. Some of you might be familiar with that. It's a kind of uh, student exchange within Europe um, and I realized then that I thought I was fluent in French because I could read a novel uh, but actually I wasn't able to have a conversation uh, with people about you know something very informal. Uh, so that really showed me that I really made a mistake at the start and I didn't really focus on listening enough. So that's something that I want to say I would change and I would definitely encourage you to practice your listening skills right from the start. Uh, I think for me what helped was conversations with real people. Uh, so just talking and I was lucky enough to be living in France at the time when I realized that, that was an area of development for me. Um, and I did just have lots of conversations. It was really scary at the start. I was staying in a hall of residence and it was really scary at the time, leaving my room and trying to have conversations with people when I didn't feel confident at all. Uh, but it became uh, quite easy very quickly. And I was surprised how quickly you can progress when you really commit to speaking every day. 
so there are lots of different ways in which you can practice speaking even if you're not living in France because I know most of you are not. So the easiest way is probably to organize a language exchange which is something that you wouldn't have to pay for. Um, a language exchange is basically where you teach your native language to somebody who's learning it and then they teach you their language. So find somebody who's learning your language and who is also French uh, or a French speaker um, and they will be able to kind of exchange that language with you. Uh, you can do that through things like italki but also uh, you know there's lots of Facebook groups where you can find conversation partners as well. So when it comes to listening comprehension, uh, obviously like I mentioned to you at the start of this video, I was learning French before YouTube was a real thing, um, so I would definitely incorporate that uh, today. If you have access to Netflix, that's even better. Um, there is a way to learn uh, languages with Netflix and I covered that in a separate video, which I'm gonna link um, in the description box, so make sure you check it out. Um, but um, I definitely recommend YouTube and Netflix as two kind of sources of listening practice. So when it comes to speaking, obviously that's, that's very important. Like I said, you can arrange a language exchange. You can also speak to yourself. Um, and I personally did a lot of presentations uh, on different topics to myself. I actually went to language classes uh, at university, so that was part of my homework, uh, but I also did it uh, kind of separately just for myself to be able to practice speaking. And you can come up with lots of possible topics. Uh, usually I would choose a controversial topic and I would kind of set out my views on it, um, or I would set out uh, kind of opposing views and, and talk about, you know, the pros and cons of, some, of something or the different views that people might hold about particular subject. Um, you can record yourself which helps because then you can play it back and spot your own mistakes sometimes or you can you know if you've got the luxury of uh, having access to a French native speaker you can ask them to watch your video and give you some feedback. I also practice translation so I think translation can be a great tool for learning a foreign language. I translated um, a lot of things into English and from English back into French um, there is a website called Word Reference. It's brilliant for, for, for looking for um, questions about translation, how to translate things idiomatically um, and how to say things correctly so that they sound native. Uh, so I definitely recommend translation and Word Reference as a kind of website where you can look things up if you're not sure how to translate something. I also read very complex texts. So that's kind of more towards the end of my journey. So like I said to you at the start, I was doing lots of vocabulary learning um, and reading kind of pop novels or, or like very accessible no novels. But then I moved on to more complex texts uh, and I read a lot about uh, kind of philosophy. Um, I read some sort of 18th and 19th century literature as well, which was quite difficult at the start because it's quite overwhelming and the language is very different, it can be very complex, very flowery, uh, but it is helpful and it is very interesting so I definitely recommend that too. So like I mentioned before I learned a lot of words and I mean a lot. I mean learning vocabulary is definitely next to reading, it's one of my favorite things about learning a language. Um, so just learning loads and loads and loads of words because the language is made up of words. So if you want to be good at French, you need to be good at words. <laughs> you need to know a lot of words. And then maybe more recently, uh, or maybe also towards the end of my journey, I went to a lot of meetups where I could meet people who are learning French, uh, not just native speakers, but other people who speak French. Um, it actually helps me personally when I speak a foreign language to somebody who is also using that language as their foreign language. It's a little bit less intimidating, a little, a little bit uh, kind of easier, I guess, because uh, people who speak a foreign language tend to speak less quickly and also maybe use uh, kind of simpler language sometimes. So I find that really useful as well. Um, I would definitely recommend doing that from the start if you know you've got opportunities where you live uh, or just online meeting people and uh, talking uh, in the language. And then finally my final thing is teaching others. So teaching others French uh, is a great idea. You know, If you find somebody who is struggling with French, you can try and explain things to them. And teaching is a great way to learn yourself because by explaining it to somebody, you kind of make sense of it 
in your own head a little bit more. Um, and I find that even, you know, with making YouTube videos, when I explain things to you guys, um, I kind of find that it makes more sense in my head and it kind of enriches my own learning as well. Um, so I definitely recommend that if you've got the opportunity. So I hope sharing my language learning journey with French uh, was useful for you guys. Uh, I definitely encourage you to learn French. Um, and it's a great language. I've made separate videos about um, how to learn French as a beginner, uh, whether French is a difficult language to learn, and if you're not convinced, the reasons why French is a great language to learn. Um, so let me know in the comments if you're learning French and where you are with the language, and I'll see you next time. Bye!